The past year in the United States has seen a spike in the amount of anti-Asian hate crimes reported, especially in cities with larger populations of Asian Americans, such as New York City, Los Angeles, and Boston. After the mass shootings in spas in Atlanta, Georgia, that killed six Asian women out of the total eight victims earlier this month, a movement was sparked to support the Asian community and to stand up to hate against Asian Americans. I went to the Stop Asian Hate rally in Springfield this past weekend to learn more about anti-Asian hate and to hear the voices of members in the local Asian community. Honestly, I'm doing this for my kids. You know, my daughter is just, she, she's, in, she's telling me, she's like, she saw the news about the Asian women being killed and she said, Mama, should you be worried? Are you going to be killed? Are, are we going to be killed? You know, and what kind of mom would I be? if I didn't tell her that we can do something about this. I'm hoping that my words will reach young people especially because I think they're the ones that need a lot of encouragement and support and guidance and explanation about why adults are hurting each other. I then sat down with rally organizer Amihan Matias to gain her perspective on the recent flare of hate crimes against Asians and to learn about her experience as a first generation Asian American living in the United States. A hate crime is a crime of uh, violence directed towards a specific group of people. And the reason that it's so hard to prosecute is because what you're attempting to do is trying to determine what the motivation is and intent. And if somebody doesn't from the beginning acknowledge or confess that it was uh, you know, racial bias and hatred that motivated the act of violence or the crime, then it's really hard to, um, to, to uh, identify that as a hate crime. And in the case of the At Atlanta shootings, that is um, re the reason why so many people in the Asian, Asian American Pacific Islander community are feeling pretty angered by the fact that this is not being identified as a hate crime. I became aware that I was different than others and that my Asian American identity was perceived in a particular way um, when I first came here to the East Coast from San Francisco and where the other um, families and kids in the area had never met an Asian person. When we first arrived, um, our house got stoned and there were um, the pains that were next to the front door were broken. And that was really seen as, a, as an act of, uh, of aggression, you know, and, and an act that conveyed the message that we don't want you, you don't belong here. So the model minority myth is a myth that has really been detrimental to Asian, Asian American Pacific Islander communities. Uh, in essence, it's the belief that Asian Americans uh, are doing really well in this country, academically, professionally, economically. We get pit against other Black, Indigenous, and people of color. So uh, we are uh, held up as the example of what can be achieved if you only worked hard like the um, Asian Americans. There are so many uh, countries and ethnic groups that fall under that umbrella. And people came here to the United States under different circumstances. So you can't ignore the fact that there are some uh, Asian, Asian Pacific Islander, Pacific, sorry, Asian, Asian American Pacific Islanders who came here as refugees, uh, escaping war-torn war nations who left without anything. Racism and violence towards our communities is, is not something new. Um, and I think that because this past year there's been an escalation of violence against um, Asian and Asian American Pacific Islander groups, it's risen about 150% during this past year um, that we've been going through this COVID-19 pandemic because there was an association made with um, COVID-19 and, um, and Chinese communities. Yeah, it was referred to as the Kung flu, the Wuhan virus, and um, because the previous administration made that connection, it really invited a lot of anger and resentment and scapegoating towards our communities. And, uh, and so um, we've really suffered and the people that have been targeted the most are women and elders within the community. So essentially what I'm saying is we need you. Uh, our communities are hurting, people are feeling unsafe, 
our businesses are suffering, actually take the time to reach out and get to know um, Asian Americans because part of the problem in this country is that we are so segregated uh, and that enables us to really see people as other and to dehumanize them because you don't see them or know them as people. So take the time to get to know us, take the time to learn more about our history, take the time to uh, reach out and, um, and pull us into your community. So what are we to make of all of this? Will America reflect on this pivotal moment in history and learn from past mistakes? Or will the country continue to see mo moments like this replay moving forward? These questions and broader questions about race and violence in the United States will take time and discussion to answer. I'm Stefan Johnson, and thank you for watching.